Hi, Paul Balvasini. In this demonstration today, I want to show you how I uh, paint white white flower blossoms. Uh, they're a little different than doing, you know, darker flower blossoms, reds, or or even the yellows. Uh, with white, uh, I find that I have to pre-mix a lot of colors first, uh, and then apply the whites at the end, but use subtle shades of, of grays uh, to represent the tones, different tones in the white blossoms. So the way I do that is I pre-mix several piles of local color that I'll then make into little puddles and manipulate as necessary to develop the forms. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Here, I've mixed several, pre-mixed uh, several um, different hues, uh, a light yellow, a light orange, a gray, a light blue. These are all kind of grayed down. And I'm gonna use those mixed into all my standard more full chroma colors to develop the tones I need to uh, develop these uh, uh, white uh, uh, blossoms. As you can see here, in the ones I've already done, the blossom that I've already done, there's there's actually not that much white in the white blossom, only in the highlights. Uh, the rest of it is all um, very subtle shades of gray to develop the forms. All right, so let's start. I'm gonna do uh, the darker, slightly darker background color first. So I've mixed, I pre-mixed up from these colors, um, a darkish shadow color, which is mostly a gray. And I'm using some of my medium and I'm just kind of scrubbing it on as the base color. And some of the underpainting is gonna show through, which is okay, I want that. It's the benefit of doing an underpainting. It's kind of a very, very dull down purple color, mauvish color. So once that's done, I'm going to dip into some of these pre-mixed colors and then just brush them right over it. I'm going to modulate warm and cool on one, <clears throat> cool on one side and a little bit warmer on the other. Kind of starts out as a big mess, but I'll be I'll be using my <clears throat> blending brush to pull it all together. Optically, I may have to go back and correct it a little bit. That's okay. Just add some more right over it until it looks right. Kind of takes care of that. So then I just move on to each shape at a time, kind of uh, paying attention to what my reference image shows for a tone. Where it's kind of cool, I use a cool mixture. Where it's a little warmer, I, I use a warmer mixture. And I'm constantly modifying these little puddles. So we'll go with that for now and blend those in a little bit. I don't change my blending brush, even though it's got some of the other color in it, the orangish color that I use for that background because it's going to dull out the colors a little bit, and that's okay. That's okay for shadows. And now 
I got one more to do. Background one here. Now we'll get to the whites. It's about the, the only time the whites can come in. And I'm not using a pure white. I use a extra yellow pale for my white. So it's never really that bright white to start with. And I add a little bit of a tiny little bit of a light blue usually. And not the pure white till the very end usually the next day when it's dried. I touch up those whites a little bit with the pure white. And then I, I start refining the edges a little bit. I'm actually adding highlights now to help define the form, even though it's in shadow. It's actually in shadow. But there are highlights in the shadow areas, too. I guess my cat likes it too. That's him I hear in the background. Pay a lot of a lot of attention to edges. Edges are really important. I do a lot of careful careful blending on some of the edges with a little dry brush. No paint because the paint is pretty wet. That's already on there.
So that's it for that little passage. I'm just cleaning up these edges again. And that's basically the technique I'm going to use to do all the white petals in this blossom. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching.